Israel is 5,690 miles away from the U.S., 11 hours by plane. Hate travels faster, in a comment, in a post, in a second. Jewish hate is up 388% in the U.S. Black hate, Muslim hate, and Asian hate are up too. When one hate rises, they all do. Let's stand up to all hate together. Share and wear the blue square from StandUpToJewishHate.org. It's easy to lose sleep when you're worried about your health insurance plan. But when you have a family counting on you to take care of them, having the right coverage is more important than ever. That's why Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield is here to help. With low to no cost plans for you and your family. So you never go it alone. That's our anthem. Click to learn more. What's up? This is Nina Perez and this is Straight Talk, No Sugar Added. Thank you so much for being here. I created this show for you, finding the best humans on the planet to grow, challenge, and transform your thinking. Let's do this. So I found somebody, okay? I found somebody for you. So we're going to have a great conversation. His name is Roman Fisher. And he witnessed his grandfather and very close family friends succumbing to serious health problems caused by cancer and unhealthy eating habits. And he realized that he did not want to see the same fate befall any more of his loved ones and even the entire global population. That's a big, that's a big goal. That's a big goal, Roman. So motivated by his profound experience, he took it upon himself to become a agent of change. I love that. So we're going to talk about that. He's dedicated to transforming people's lives one body at a time with the ultimate goal of creating a positive impact in the world. And I really, really love that. I, just, I think I, I, um, as me and you were talking, I keep telling you that that's what I love is to transform our thinking, right? It's to challenge the way we do things. And the truth is, is Roman, it's, it's, you know, one of the battles I think that so many people have I can only speak about Americans because I'm an American, right? So I've only, I've lived here all my life and we battle these things, especially when it comes to mindset, weight loss, health, all of that. So you got quite a bit of a challenge. So Roman, before we get into all the nitty gritties of everything you're going to bring to the table, who are you? Who are you? Who who is Roman? So other than Roman Fisher, (laughs) I'm an actor, uh, model, bodybuilder, and high-performance coach, helping people just transform their overall minds and bodies both, not just, you know, with their physical and uh, mental, but also the emotional energy and even their sleep too, just improving their overall sleep quality uh, from day to day, just uh, just so that they can go all out and conquer their day that way right yeah. right well uh, you said a lot of cool things there so you're uh, also an actor and is that something that was before or after you decided you're going to get into this uh, changing lives for fitness yeah so really it was around the same time but the acting actually came just prior before not too far before but it was uh prior to my journey of trying to help transform people's minds and bodies yeah. through you know healthy eating and uh physical activity and fitness what did that do to you seeing your granddad um you know ill did you see him ill or did you only see him like kind of pass away and kind of realize what was happening yeah so being that he lived in Wisconsin, actually, and that's where uh, most of my family is from is Wisconsin. But hearing that, you know, news, because I was in Arkansas, and I've been in Arkansas for most of my life. Mm -hmm. So I, I mainly heard the news over the phone that he was uh, ill and not really feeling the best. So I was wondering what was all like fully going on. And Mm -hmm. I was hoping, you know, for the best, of course, in all that. But after I got the news over the phone and actually my mom got the news from her brothers over the phone because her brothers live in Wisconsin um, Mm -hmm, along mm -hmm. where he lived and they let her know and just had her be aware of the, you know, terrible news that that was of him passing away. And then that's how I found out through my mom after she heard the news from them. And yeah, it was, it was sad. It was very, very difficult, very challenging to, you know, put up with. Yeah, no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, so it was yeah, it was really hard to, you know, combat that in my head just knowing that actually yeah. happened like cuz right. that doesn't typically happen for most people, you know, at least not for a while, you know, but that's something that 
it just seemed very sudden, you know, it, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Cause yes, I was growing up. I was, you know, in my twenties at the time, but, and I still am in my twenties, but I was in my early, early twenties when I found that out. And it's really strange because that's not one of those things that you just anticipate. I mean, you know that people are going to pass away eventually, right. but you don't anticipate your own family passing away. Mm-hmm. And when mm-hmm. it happens, it's a slap in the face, uh, to put it lightly. I mean, it's it's really, really difficult. And it that is. that put me in a deep depression, for sure, for mm-hmm. for quite some time, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's a that's a. I think that's something that connects us all in our human experience, right? Is is something we can, none of us can avoid, none of us can work out, none of us can, you know, navigate or or lie ourselves through. Death is death, and and when it comes, it hurts, and it doesn't matter who you are. If it's a close somebody you love, it's gonna impact you, and that is something that all of us, every single human on the planet, has as a shared experience, right? That's that pain, that that real ache that happens when you love someone and you didn't expect it. Was your granddad ill or was he uh, pretty healthy or what what was that about? Yeah, so he actually in his early, early years, he actually was a a military, you know, veteran. And he, you know, got into the military and he was pretty active, I would say, Mm -hmm. at least with his uh, physical state, he was pretty healthy much of his life but after he got out of the military and just um you know got back into the regular day-to-day society he kind of let himself go i mean he wasn't Mm -hmm. like super overweight but he let himself go in the sense that he didn't really pay attention to what he was doing with his body with what he was eating he never really wore sunscreen outside he got sunburnt a lot uh ate a lot of sugary foods sugar-filled foods like nonstop. he was a sugar addict Right. And that that definitely contributed to his, you know, eventual cancer. And that that made it really tough to yeah. know that he was basically harming himself and killing himself slowly. Yeah. And then ultimately for it to, you know, pass. And that that was that was rough. I mean, you know, uh, of course, we all want to believe that they're in a good place. But still, yeah. I mean, even on yeah. this you know, earth or planet that we all live on. It's, it's really tough when that one person that you've always known and loved just basically yeah. vanishes as if it was nothing. I mean, it, that's, it's, it's a surreal. void. It's a yeah. void. Yeah. It's a void and that no one can fill. It's just a void. It just stays a void, you know? Um, so the reason I asked about your granddad, and I'm really sorry that he passed is yeah. because you mentioned him as one of your catalysts for change. Um, you know, because you, you, um, when I was reading your website and even when me and you had a conversation, you were saying how, you know, um, the unhealthy eating habits that, that people have that can cause cancer and all other kinds of things. Right. But you saw not just your uh, grandfather, but uh, you know, other uh, people that you've known, pass away from unhealthy things. So, um, but that doesn't, you know, uh, let me rephrase you at times though, that doesn't change people though. Right. They just say, Oh, my granddad died. And then they keep it. They keep going in the same direction. Right. So what made you look at your life and say, no, I'm actually going to take control of this. Right. Because I think that, uh, so a couple of things could have happened. You could have stayed in your depression, right. Um, uh, uh, something that I have a gripe with, with society is that they, they like to keep people victims. Right. And so I, I have a little bit of a gripe with that, you know, because I feel like we all go through depressing times. We yeah. all go through depressing times. And at some point you have to take ownership and kind of rise above that. Right. Yeah. Most definitely. So, yeah. Were you, oh, were you healthy at that time already? Were you already on your health journey and this just catapulted you to help others or how did that look? Yeah. So I was pretty serious about my health at that time, but I still was not as serious as I am today. Right. And I'll admit if it wasn't for that specific event occurring, not that it was good that it happened, but if it wasn't for that happening, I wouldn't be as, you know, uh, headstrong and stubborn, if you will, with my right. overall diet and, 
just physical activity, uh, just a lot of the research I did prior to his passing really just gave me a huge enlight, um, enlightenment, enlightenment, mm-hmm. can't even say that, <laughs> insight. I'll just say it gave me a huge insight on really the effects of unhealthy eating mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. all the negative stuff that they put in our food that causes yeah. all these you know, conditions that people get ADHD, cancer. Um, Mm -hmm. I mean, the list goes on and on. It's, it it does. It's, it's, it is nuts. It is nuts. nuts. I was, I was talking to my husband about that. I think it was just yesterday. And I was like, you know, we were growing up, um, you know, I'm 50. So when we were growing up, I remember, you know, just, um, not seeing as many conditions as I do now, at least in the last 10 years, I even have a son who has autism, right? So a grandson, excuse me, a grandson who has autism. And um, I just, it's it's just everywhere now. It's just everywhere, you know? And it has to be linked to, I I, I think it has to be linked to food and maybe some medicines or something. It just has to be linked to something, you know, because, you know, the planet itself, you know, it kind of revitalizes itself and it does what it does. But I think we're just ingesting things that are killing us. And I, you know, I'm one of them, right? I mean, I've definitely on my, in this, uh, in my own show have said, I, I, I'm a sugar addict myself, right? So I'm like this last, like maybe a couple of months, I've said, that's enough. Enough is enough. I'm like 50 years old. Do I want to spend the next 30 summers, 30 Christmases, whatever God gives me, do I want to spend them ill? Right? So I'm, I feel pretty blessed that even though I am overweight and I'm working on uh, losing the weight and being healthy, that I am healthy so far, like all my blood works healthy, like all that kind of stuff. But that doesn't always stay that way, right? To your point, this is what you're helping exactly. people with. This is exactly what you're helping people with. So tell me now what you're doing. Like what made you go, you know what? I'm healthy, but I can't keep this for myself. I need to start helping people. What, what, what does that look like? What, what was that for you? Yeah. So other than, of course, not wanting the same fate for myself with my grandpa's passing, I also didn't want that same fate for other people because I saw a lot of people just die from unhealthy eating throughout my years. And that was that was one of the cases for Mm -hmm, sure with my grandpa. mm -hmm. So I would say a, a combination of all the experiences from the people I knew that just didn't really care about what they ate and drank and then right. passing ultimately from that. I, I would say between that and then also the, and this is a more positive, uh, even more positive point, the overall just high, if you will, that I got from working out and mm-hmm, eating healthy mm-hmm. and just how it made me feel that much better, more energetic, um, slept better, I could focus more and actually concentrate on what I would want to do or need yeah. to do throughout the week or throughout the day. So all those positive like changes and benefits that I got from eating clean and cutting out a lot of sugar and really not having cravings anymore, because I noticed when I started cutting out sugars, I really didn't have all those unhealthy free, uh, food cravings anymore. Oh, good. So I would say, yeah, yeah just all those things uh, in harmony just made me want to have that, you know, be for Mm. other people too. Cause I saw a lot of people struggle, um, with diet and resisting, you know, cravings Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. they had. And Mm -hmm. I really, I felt sorry for a lot of the people I would see, whether it was at a job that I had. Um, cause I used to work at a grocery store. I would see people just eating and buying anything off the shelves, anything, uh, and everything. And I really did, um, I really did feel sorry for some of those people because, you know, these people don't always know. I mean, some people just eat whatever because they want to, but some people don't always really know what they're putting in their body. Yeah. And those, yeah. those people, especially, I felt sorry for yeah. um, growing yeah. up and seeing that firsthand. Yeah. yeah. You know, what you're saying is, is so true too. And I, I, the truth is, is we have a lot of technology, right? So there's a lot of technology. There's a lot of YouTube. There's a lot of everything you can do out there. That, I mean, that's just facts, right? There's a lot of information yeah. and it's also a problem. There's a lot of information, right? So you don't even know yeah. what real information is, what not real information is. And then if you have conglomerates that want to kind of like shove something down your throat, you know, it's replayed and replayed and replayed to the point where you're just like, 
oh, it's not so bad if I go have a couple burgers or it's not so bad if I have some ice cream or it's not so bad. And then, you know, there's also misleading in packaging, right? You talked about clean eating. I, I have a, um, a lot of friends of mine who are into fitness like yourself, right? And so, um, they like, I'll say, oh, yeah, I, I ate healthy. And I'll show them something. They're like, oh, heck no, do not eat that. You know, I'm like, yeah. are you kidding me? I thought, I thought this was good, you know, and I'm not because I'm like, uh, you know, not, not thinking. Sometimes it, it looks like the package says it's good. The label says it's good. Like it's organic. It's clean, blah, blah, blah. And then you eat it and it's not good, right? Yeah. So I think that's where... A, a person like you steps in and says, listen, we're going to talk about clean eating. We're going to talk about nutrition. We're going to talk about as well. I don't want to take the words out of your mouth, but I'm, I have a feeling that's the kind of guy you are. Right. Yeah, so, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Got to so guide him the right way. <laughs> right. Exactly. Well, because there's so much information, Roman, exactly. and not only that right now, like it must drive you crazy. I think about a friend of mine who is a, who's been a, um, in uh, physical fitness trainer and athletic and all that kind of stuff for like, I think he's like done it like 30 years now. Oh, wow. Super nice. fit. Like you yeah. see him and you're like, he has to be 30 years old. No, he's like well in his fifties. Like he's so fit. Right. That's good. I like yeah, that. Yeah. Very, very good. And we were talking about, I forgot what we were talking about. And, and something came up with, um, fat shaming or something. We were talking about something about health and whatever. Cause I had a, I had a podcast that used to be called memoirs of a fat girl with the F A T. And okay. yeah. And people used to go crazy. Like, why are you saying fat? Because I have fat and I'm trying to lose it. Yeah, why am exactly. I going to, you know, let's go, let's, let's stop sugarcoating stuff. So he was, he and I were got into a very big topic about nowadays, how they're trying to make body positivity, a overweight thing. Like if you're overweight, yeah. that's a body positive thing. I'm a plus size girl. Okay. That is not a positive thing. All right. I love me. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, that doesn't mean exactly. I hate me. Right. But right. I know that this will be my demise if I don't take care of it. I know it is. So let's stop making pretend that this yeah. is a good thing. It's not a good thing. Okay. And this exactly. is coming from a fat girl. So I can <laughs> say it. So all of you guys right now who are screaming at your radio. Okay. I'm just letting y'all know. He didn't say it. I said it. You know, as, as a girl who is plus size, honestly, as a girl who is plus size, I know how hard it is on my body. I know how hard it is walking upstairs. I know how hard it is to do all of that. Now I'm walking like nine miles a, a week. So I'm doing, trying to do three miles every other day and I'm trying to work out now and I'm really watching what I'm eating and stuff. And I feel really good. That's good I feel yeah. really good. But the thing is, is at some point we have to stop listening to all of these shenanigans and start taking care of ourselves. Right. Exactly. So as a fit, a person who is really looking at this, cause I, I'm just picturing you looking at this, like my grandpa died. I've seen friends or family members and people that have gotten ill over being overweight and, you know, eating the bad things. And then you see a commercial come up about pot, body positivity, you know, with overweight. And you must be like, yeah. I have so much work to do, right? Exactly. <laughs> you have so yeah, much work to do. That's the thing. Like the <laughs> biggest thing I would say when it comes to self-love that anybody can do for themselves to take care uh, for them of uh, themselves and for themselves is to actually work on their body. I mean, right. yes, like you said, love yourself, of course, always, no matter how much you weigh, no matter if you're skinny or not. But the biggest thing when it comes to self-love is actually taking care of your body. Yep. Hey there, my amazing community of straight talkers. I just wanted to give a quick announcement because I wanted to introduce you to a transformative life coaching program that I have made exclusively for women. I want them to break free from shame and embrace their true potential so that they can build that life and business that they have always wanted. Now, our transformational coaching will guide you. We will help you. We will uncover your passion, your goals, and will develop your roadmap to success. Visit me at ninaperez.com and you can join Join an amazing community of women that are on the same trajectory as you because I want you to create that life and business you deserve and transcend that shame and unwanted behaviors. So don't wait any longer. Visit NinaPerez.com and let's embark on this journey together. Now back to the show. It's your body, yeah. I like to believe at least it's a temple. And if you don't treat it that, is. you know, that temple right and properly then it's it's just not going to be it's not going to be there because mm -hmm. if you're 
overweight, that doesn't mean obviously you're a bad person per se and that you're less than, but if you don't want to take care of your body and cleanse it from the inside out, then you really don't love yourself at that right. point. I know right. they say body positivity, but you're really not being positive to your body because right. you're neglecting your body essentially. And you're giving it, um, illnesses and ailments. I mean, you are right. So, um, I, I I don't know. Um, I want to get into a little bit about what it is you do with your clients. So one of the things that as a person who is plus size and also a very high achiever, right? So I'm, uh, I'm like my own business. I like rock it out in my jobs. I'm like, you know, director and all that. So I have a lot going on. Right. Yeah. And I neglected my body. And so I am dealing with a lot of autoimmune conditions, which now I have to deal with Sjogren's disease and Graves disease and all that kind of stuff. Right. So, but if I take care of myself, watch what I eat, exercise, like all those kind of things, those things can always stay like dormant. Right. Exactly. Um, so I can, I can sit here too and be like, Oh, what do you mean, Roman? Of course I'm positive. It's like all self-love. I'm good. You know, but then dying. You know what I'm saying? Or then can't walk a flight of stairs without huffing and puffing. Like, yep. it's absolutely insane. Like, I, I'm it looking is. at this stuff happening. I'm like, guys, are you, are you uh, can we stop this madness? There's nothing positive about being ill. Because it, even though I am overweight and I have autoimmune conditions, I have very good cholesterol, very good sugar. I'm not diabetic. I'm not those things. But you don't think it's coming? Hell yeah, it's coming. It is coming to get me if I don't do something about it. And if you are overweight, you really need to stop and think, how how much do I love myself? Because if I love myself, I should take care of myself. I should watch out for myself because the food companies are not going to do it for you. It's just facts. You know, other people are not going to do it for you. Nobody's coming to rescue your ass. You're yeah. going to have to rescue your own ass. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Yeah. So I want to now um, shift a little bit and talk about what you do. So what are you doing? Right. So I'm coming to Roman. I see you on this podcast. I'm like, this guy is cool. What does that look like? Yeah. So what I do is um, I just, you know, walk through with anyone interested. I schedule a call with them. I do a consultation just to really pinpoint what they've tried with their goals, what their goals even are. And then, you know, any roadblocks or obstacles that are in their way of them and their goals uh, currently from there, I just create a huge blueprint or roadmap mm. that's still very simple and concise and just really pinpoints and highlights where and how I can help them with that goal. After mm. that, if they're a good fit and everything goes well, I take them on and yeah, I just start them from day one uh, to however long they uh, need help. And from there, I do two coaching calls a week. So what's really awesome. cool about that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's really neat about that is I can just discuss with them anything about their life. It can be fitness. It can be non uh, fitness related even mm -hmm. uh, basically just get a feel for how their day went, how their motivation and sleep's going. And if they're sleeping well, if they're drinking enough water and just anything about their life, um, fitness right. or, or non-fitness. And then from there, yeah, I just give them customized workouts, uh, customized meal plans to you uh, for them to follow. And what's really cool to you is they're very simple, uh, easy to make recipes that can be done in 15 minutes or less. Or if they want to, you know, great. more complex meal plan, then I, I do that too. But anything they like to eat, I do include in there. Uh, cheap meals are fine, but I do try to make a point still to steer them away from the sugar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sugar's a culprit. I mean, it's, it's, it's really, it's in everything too. That's it's in everything, you know? So it's, it's uh, something that's very easy to get addicted to and very acceptable to get addicted to. Right. So if you see somebody walking with a bag of candy down the street, you don't look twice. You see somebody walking with a uh, 40 uh, or, or, you know, or some liquor, you do look twice, right? Yeah. But it's the same thing. It's both an addiction. It's just, you know, you're looking at it in a different way. Oh, food, yeah. just ha food just happens to be something we all need to survive. And so um, as people who are overweight or or people who have addictions to, to food, it's acceptable. It's socially acceptable. 
you know? And yeah. so it becomes easier to cheat. It becomes easier to eat something. It becomes easier to go to the grocery store, to your point, and pick up something that you shouldn't be eating. Oh, yeah. It's just easier. You know, there's been times where I'm like at the supermarket and I see, you know, some maybe somebody who is uh, obese, like, you know, be, like me, or right? I'm overweight. And then I look in their cart and it's just like a bunch of like Cheetos and cheesecakes and, yeah. you know, pies and all that kind of stuff. And I feel for them because yeah. I know it's an addiction. I know it is. It is. And, it's the, and, and it's the same thing as, you know, my, you know, uh, family member, whoever going to the store and, and getting liquor and drinking all day. It's, it's the same thing. And it's a hard thing to break too, Roman. It's a hard thing to break, right? Oh, yeah. I love that you're doing two calls a week. I've, I haven't really had anybody say that on the, on, the, on the podcast before. They usually do once a week or once every other week. Twice a week means you're very invested yeah. in their results. Oh, yeah. yeah, definitely. Just want to make sure that, you know, they can get any and all the results that they wanted from day one to however – it's usually about a 12 to 16 week program yeah, depending good. on their goals. Mm -hmm. But I just like to really hold them accountable and have them stick to it as best as possible to really maximize uh, those results for them. And then yeah. from there, they just, they usually never look back and they're always uh, going in a really great, positive, uh, solid direction from there. So you're, you're helping them mentally as well to prepare for when you're, when the 16 weeks are over. Basically. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And sometimes they'll go on to like phase two. And I mean, some will continue long term even, but yeah. if they, but if they don't and they feel like they have the skills at that point, that's great. But then I still have that mindset prepped for them. Mm -hmm. um, and I program them in, in that sense, if you will, not in yeah. a bad way, <laughs> yeah, but I, I program it. them in yeah. the sense of not thinking so negative and pessimistic, but more so optimistic and how they can actually, you know, change their, um, whole tra trajectory, if I can say that trajectory of their lives and yeah. really just do better in anything they want to do, whether it's with their workouts or even personal or business. Do you have a, a client that comes to mind that you've seen transformation with that you're like, wow, like, yeah. you know, we all have those, right? I have oh, clients yeah. like that too, that you're just like, Wow. So give me, give me that story. You don't have to yeah. give me her name or his name, but give me the story. Definitely. There's a few, but one, one solid one in particular would have to be one of my uh, female clients. And she went from being around 200 pounds, uh, 200 pounds, actually specifically to just as of uh, late, she's hovering around 179 now. Good and for her. not only did she lose about 21 pounds and just a really a couple months two and a half months um but she also she also did it with uh feeling better having more energy she even gained some strength and even a little muscle in the process Good and man. yeah it, it's really cool just not only seeing the transformation um in the pictures with the transformation pictures but also hearing it you know in her voice mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. jump in energy and positivity and confidence Right. And then also just seeing just the aurora on her face and like how much she's glowing now compared to, you know, before she was more, you know, depressed and not very confident, but the transformation and change, it's astounding to say the least. It, it was not really a good feeling. Neat. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's a really good feeling. Cool. Yeah. And especially because you're her coach, right? So when you're seeing the transformation in your in your eyes too you're like yes yeah. you're doing the work yes. it's awesome yeah. you know um I, I was watching an interview with uh andrew tate and i know a lot of people don't like him so before y'all start yelling at the radio again i was watching the interview with andrew tate and he said a strong body a strong body is a strong mind and a strong mind is a strong body and he said um you know Yes, I have depression in my life. I don't get, I'm not a depressed person, but I have depression. And he said, but push ups still need to get done. And I was like, yeah. damn, <laughs> that's a mindset, right? That's good. Like, he's like, I might get up and because, you know, he was in jail recently and all that. And they were asking him about that. He said, yes, I was depressed. I'm looking at a wall. Look at, you know, I have nothing to do, but push ups need to get done. So push ups got done every that's day. Cool. And I'm just like, Damn. Okay. That's a mindset, right? I don't, I don't agree with everything he says, but that was so, um, that, I don't know. That just like 
hit me in a certain way, you know, because I'm like, you know, yeah, right. Isn't that good? Yeah. I've had (laughs) some days myself where I did not really sleep uh, much at all because like, yeah, maybe I was out with uh, an audition or like an acting gig and then I got back super late or did an overnight. So then the next day I was super tired um, after being on set and then I still still made a point. I was like, okay, the next day it's still a workout day. And then that next day came, I only probably slept like three or four hours, (laughs) but I still was like, okay, I'm making it to the gym. No excuses. I'm going to do it. I may not work out as well, but I'm still going to really hit it as hard as I can. Yeah. Your body will love you for it. You know, it's the, it's the same thing. Like I said, like the last month and a half, I finally just took the bull by the horns and started taking care of myself. And, um, the other day I I'm going through menopause, right? I'm 50. So I'm going through the menopause and these hot flashes and can't sleep. So I sleep maybe three hours a night. Right. So uh, I was three hours a night, but I knew I had to do that three miles the next day. I knew it. And I was yeah. so like, damn it. So I'm sitting in the bed and I'm like, Okay, I'm like making a thousand excuses. And then I just busted out laughing, Roman, because I'm like, you sound so stupid right now. Just get dressed and go. And that's what I did. I was tired. I was walking slower than I normally walk, but I did my three miles and then I got my ass home in the shower and took a nap. That's how we do it. (laughs) That's how you do it. And that's that's the kind of mindset I'm trying to really adopt in my life and just kind of just I want to be that, right? I want to be that where I just, the pushups got to get done. The pushups got to yeah. get done. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I've never been that mindset, maybe, I don't know, 30 years ago, but it's been that long since I've seriously honed in on taking care of myself. Right. So it's, it's, um, when you get older, you just start to get a different perspective. You start to realize that your life is super short now, Yeah, you know? You don't have those. It's, I don't have 50 crazy. years anymore. 50 years are gone, gone. Right. So now 50 years are gone. How do I want this last part of my life to be? Right. That's what I think is changing me. Cause I'm like, girl, you can be the best now that you've ever been. So it's that saying, right. It was good to plant a tree 20 years ago, but the second best day to plant a tree is today. Right? Oh yeah. I like so, it. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, I like, I, I like what you're doing. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you. And I also like to uh, remind myself um, if I ever have like a day where I'm just not as motivated because, you know, it's crazy, but it happens to me too. Um, But even other people that aren't always the most motivated, but just remembering the um, really highly motivating phrase, I would say it's either, you know, one day or today, you know, it's either Mm. we make it happen now or we, we keep putting it off. And that's the thing when people keep saying, I'll do it tomorrow or I'll get mm-hmm. to it tomorrow or I'll get around to it tomorrow. tomorrow they never really comes. are trying to say that it's never going to happen because they're subconsciously <laughs> exactly. like they're thinking they're making progress in a sense with their brain and mind um, and words by saying they're going to put, you know, put it off till tomorrow, thinking they're going to do it. But at the yep. same time, they know deep down inside they're not going to do it at that point. <laughs> it, it's right. a really weird so uh, psychological true. situation. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, it's definitely one of those things. You just got to grab the bull by the horns and yeah. just go all well, in. It's a comforting thing, right? If you if you say to yourself, you'll do it tomorrow, you feel like you got this. You're going to do it tomorrow. Yeah. But I said, I've been saying I'm doing it tomorrow for about 20 years <laughs> Yeah. Right. And I've had I've had waves like where I've got, where I've gone to the gym and gotten healthy and then back and then yo-yos. I don't want to yo-yo anymore is the point. Right. And so I, I don't want to keep I don't want I'm trying to break the habit is what it is of yo-yoing. And I'm trying to break the habit of saying I'll do it tomorrow. And as soon as I see my mouth even fixing to say the words, I get my ass up. You know what I'm saying? Like exactly. every like this morning, same thing. I was going to go through three miles. I only slept two hours. I was tired. I was like, I just, oh, and I just got, I got up. I just got up. I'm like, as soon as I saw the excuse coming, cause I have to break the habit, you know? Oh yeah. So I'm so stoked that you're helping people in this way. Don, do you work with men and women? Yeah, definitely. Oh, okay. Yeah. Great. I was mainly doing women for a while, but I've actually um, been taking on guys and, and girls both. That's good. And you know, what's cool about that is that women um, are usually kind of shy or afraid of telling like a fit man about their weight issues, right? So if you were mainly working with women, that says a lot about you and your character. Yeah, because, um, you know, women are usually intimidated by that. They usually go to another woman, 
or something like that. Cause I mean, they don't want a guy looking at her like, Oh, she's overweight. You know what I yeah. mean? So that's really cool. I'm glad that you work with both genders and I'm glad that, you know, you, you find um, that women are really, um, you know, good with that because like you said, you used your, your, um, your client as an example uh, and please tell her congratulations from me. Cause that's yeah. freaking awesome. I will. Um, and for all of those who are listening, cause I'm sure that a lot of us are, are in that place where we really need to change our lives. We just really need to change our lives. And so I, and somebody who's giving you, I want you guys to listen up because he said you can hop on a call with him twice a week. He's giving you like uh, easy recipes. He's giving you workout routines. Like, Guys, if you guys don't know what what he's saying here is what he's saying is that he has your back and he's supporting you in this journey. So let's get going with this. All right, guys. So stop complaining and bitching and moaning. Get your ass up off the bed and the couches and let's get fit because, you know, I'm trying to get fit. So I need y'all to get fit. These are all my straight talkers, Roman. They can deal with me. So oh, yeah. why don't you let them know um, what they can do to work with you? Like, how do they find you? How do they work with you? What does that look like? Yeah. So if you want to commit to be fit, <laughs> all you got to do is you can find me in a few different places um, on social media or on my direct website itself. And so my social media, it is uh, the handle is Roman Fisher official, and that's for Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube or TikTok. Facebook and Instagram would be the best. Now, if you want to go to my direct website, see my client uh, testimonials and transformations and just my whole bio and story then you can check out romanfisherofficial.com. Oh, great. Awesome sauce. Well, Roman, thank you so much for being here and hanging out with us and having a real good conversation. This was really good. And I'm glad that you're pouring into to people. I'm glad that you took something that was uh, hard and a tragedy in your life and you're using all of that now to impact other lives. And that's what this is about. Life is about taking all of the messes and making a message. Hey guys, thank you so much for listening. You are the best, okay? I have the best podcasting community ever. I really do. And I appreciate you guys being on here. If you are looking for coaching, please make sure that you also email me at hello at straighttalknosugaredit.com. I work with women and I help them develop that business that they are envisioning in their hearts so that they can win. Thank you guys so much for being here. Love you, love you, love you. This is Dina Perez, Straight Talk, No Sugar Added. Until next time. At Sleep Outfitters Outlet, great sleep is a big deal. Save 40 to 60% every day on every Sealy, Stearns & Foster, and Tempur-Pedic. Queens as low as $249. Customer exchanges, closeouts, and floor samples. Inventory changes daily, so come in for your dream deal today. With no credit needed financing, expert advice, and up to 60% off retail, it's never been easier to get the sleep and savings you deserve. Go to sleepoutfittersoutlet.com for financing details and to find a store near you. Israel is 5,690 miles away from the U.S., 11 hours by plane. Hate travels faster, in a comment, in a post, in a second. Jewish hate is up 388% in the U.S. Black hate, Muslim hate, and Asian hate are up too. When one hate rises, they all do. Let's stand up to all hate together. Share and wear the blue square from StandUpToJewishHate.org.